Hello everyone and welcome to the Slidemore webinar. My name is John Dorazio and I'm one of the partners at Slidemore. And we have James Murphy here, another partner. Yes. Tom Parsons, another partner and actually the inventor of the product. And Jesse Pariso, our Director of Marketing and Sales. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedules to be with us today. Um, hopefully, you know, this will give you a lot of different understandings of our products and where we're trying to go with our company. What we're trying to do and the goal of this webinar is to cover new Slidemore product developments and installation best practices. So what we're also trying to do is we're excited about our new developments and campaigns and a little bit more about that is specifically our evolution of docking campaign. What we're going to be doing is showing how over the years the boating industry has changed drastically. We've seen motors, hulls, the boats, I mean, you know, now we're even having Cadillac engines on boats now. It's, it's getting extensive. But what we've seen is in boat docking specifically, things have remained the same, or pretty much the same. You know, you're still on the cross-tie system. You know, if a storm comes, you're tying it down for a while. You know, double lines, triple lines, fenders, bumpers, etc. So what we've seen is our product is so effective, and our, our customers and our testimonials that we get is really the solution to that type of problem where now we are the evolution of docking. Where it came from is obviously a need when something's broken you don't fix it so you figure out a way of doing it and how we did it I sat down at my sister's dock they bought a very nice place that had uh, rights to a docking system right on the intercoastal. We don't have to say any more about the intercoastal and it was a brutal system. They had 16 docks that couldn't work. I came from Tucson uh, we didn't have to worry about water or tides or humidity or mosquitoes. It was just what we didn't have. And I got here with my eyes wide open thinking that there was always a system for everything. And when I first got there to see what was going on, at my sister's place, their boat was sitting on a trailer with 16 slips right out in front of it. What we did, as I just said, you got to be able to do something. He said, there is nothing. There is nothing. We have horrible conditions and there's just nothing we can do to make things work. Well. I love it when people say that, so I went down to the dock with a proper amount of refreshments and watched boats bang around. And the whole idea was you have to have the room to move, obviously, for the tides, but you don't want any movement. And after I just sat and watched for the shortest period of time, it was within a week we came up with our first mock-up. That mock-up we still have, someday we'll, we'll show all that to you, but we have the evolution of that mock-up right here now. The whole idea was to stop the movement before it starts. Anytime there is a, um, a wave, the boat wants to pull away from the dock and then smack. It's basically a wind up and a punch. So what we're doing is we're not allowing that punch. We're just not allowing the wind up. So there's a, you know, there is no punch. How we're doing that is by pulling the boat up tight to our system. The slide more system is a, is a moving bumper cleat system all on one track. Now the track is different lengths depending upon your tide range and whenever you want to pull your boat up, this is your boat, when you pull your boat up, you pull it up very, very tight. When it's tied so tight, it can't move. And this movement is over the years, as, as John was explaining, the evolution has been let it move. It has to move. Well, it doesn't have to move. It has to move up and down. That's all we're doing. We're letting it move up and down. So we've eliminated all of the movement and by doing this we don't need all the lines. We're only doing two of these, generally two of these on one side of the boat. The early world of docking was based on a principle of physics. A body in motion tends to stay in motion. That's what the whole industry has been. Let it move, try and stop it. Let it move, try and stop it. We went to the other end of that. A body at rest tends to stay at rest. And by holding it tight, it's very, very easy and very less, much less stressful on everything. The piling, the lines, everything to hold something that wants to stay there. People worry about the size of the boat. It doesn't matter. More the shape we have to concern ourselves with, but they say, how, how heavy are boats? We have 160,000 pound boats on these, and people don't get it because they're used to the movement. The movement that lets everything move and then tries to stop it. That's where all the engineering has always come in and it was always a failure point. This is very easy. This is static weight. We're just holding it in place and it doesn't want to move. It can't move. We're just giving it little nudges to hold it. That's why there's less stress on virtually everything. And when people see the boats moving, 
that movement is what they normally picture when, we're, when they're looking at this. Take a look at anything that's held tight, and it doesn't want to wind up and punch. And it, it, this is how we've illuminated it. The system has a maintenance-free system to it. It's amazing how well this stuff works. This glass-filled nylon material that's here has a, um, a, a, a glass-filled nylon goes all the way around the uh, internal portions, and that's what slides on the track. We don't want you to even have to lubricate it, because in the marine industry, people just don't do the maintenance they want to, so we designed it so that you wouldn't have to go through all that stuff. What we wanted to do was have something that somebody could put their boat on and walk away. Again, this is the evolution we're talking about. The maintenance aspect of it is, is non-existent, really. Um, again, we don't want you to lubricate the track. You don't have to. Some of the tracks, because of the tide range, will be in and out of the water twice a day. Um, they'll get a barnacle growth on the beginning. And this might be loud, but this is, this is the maintenance we tell you to do. It will knock off anything that grew. Our suggestion is each and every time you tie up, you drop it. And when you drop it, it does almost everything that you need to do at that time. Uh, once it cleans off, we have enough slop in this. If there's any barnacle bellies still on there, they will, they'll never bind this thing. That's what I'm saying. We have 120,000s in there, and nothing's ever, we've never had a binding with any of these things. We've basically never had any issues, as long as everybody pays attention to what we want them to do. And that's very well pointed out on the website. It's pointed out with every box that comes out to you, where you can use it, where you can't use it. We went from a single unit to a double unit. And when you do that, there is no other bridle lines. We don't, you don't need any other lines at all. With the two of them on one side, tie up is very, very quick. That's the beauty of the thing. Being easy to tie up, you don't have the deaf wand out there trying to hook up the bow lines and stern lines and chase them all while the boat's rocking around and banging and everything. This is quick. You can, we call it zen docking. You pull in, you take the one line off, you tie it up, and that quick, you're, the boat's done moving. Um, it's safe. It's safe for the person trying to tie up. It's safe for, for the people getting on and off because the boat's not dancing around. There is no other system that holds the boat right up tight to the dock and allows it to move with no damage in a safe, safe manner like what we're doing. So the, uh, the way that this works, um, it has to be lined up with the piling, needs to be lined up with the cleat on your boat. When we were doing our original ones, one cleat always lined up. When we were doing small boats, you did one, and it didn't matter what happened. Once we started doing two, it was very, very necessary to have the lineup of the cleats on your boat. You never use the cleats on the curvature around the bow, well, almost never. We even have people doing that in certain areas because you always have to make the contact. But the lineup is critical uh, within a range. I mean, there's, there's always a little bit of give that you can have. We don't want this thing off, way off, because this thing, to do its job, has to be strong, has to be substantial. It has a little bit of weight to it, and that's how it does its work. So we need it, need it to line up. There's variations also of how you can how you can make up if you have existing pilings. We have ways that we can help you with about uh, how to position that track to where it's going to give you some abilities to uh, have a lot <laughs> do stuff without having a pilings put in. Many people just want new pilings just because they want to gain the additional heights because they're going to leave their boats there for the storm. A lot of the pilings that are out there are meant to be for small setups. So a lot of times people just put them in longer pilings and then at the same time line them up. Uh, the dock builders can do all that. It's uh, it's something that that's what they're doing. A lot of people building docks. Anytime people are building docks, we always tell them, just go ahead and look the system over first of all before you do it, because in the long run, it's going to save you pilings on the outside. You don't need outside tied pilings since you're just tying up tight on one side. The cost differences are are sometimes a wash, even though some, some people think it's very expensive. Other ways of doing this where Instead of worrying about the pilings, people have installed uh, additional cleats. There's never a time when you can't use an additional cleat. And with all the new pop-up cleats they have right now, everybody has one. There's a lot of them that are very easy to install. And, and it's becoming probably, uh, as long as you have some piling height, it's becoming the way to do things and keep the costing down. Um, there's many times that we have people that come down within a year or two of buying it. And this is my favorite part of the doing the boat show is 
it makes such a difference when you're tying up with a slide mower versus prior to the slide mower that pe these people don't come down and say, hey, I have one of those, or hey, good. Men, mainly the women come up and give me a big hug. I love it because they're the ones that are out there with the death wand. It's something that they're the ones that are always doing all the death stuff while the man sits back there with the macho world of driving the boat. We found out that we probably saved as many marriages as <laughs> just because people don't like to have that argument that this is going on. In the world of uh, what everybody has lately concerned themselves with is the storms. We have great, great stories for that. And it's a tough situation because every storm is different. And when they say, well, will it handle a Cat 5 hurricane? That's more of a, a track length issue. We had boats in uh, Katrina, for example. 25-foot uh, surge and it did work because the guy had a 16-foot track it still went up there still was some damage but it worked if you didn't have enough track that's one of the things that we just ask you what size track you want standard tracks that we use are 8 foot we'll do 10s 12s we'll do anything that you can put together for your particular case we have them uh, obviously up in New England we have different different ranges we have them on the west coast of Panama up to 20 feet long so that's about the only thing that changes. The rest of the product is little variations of the same thing that's, that's um, being changed, evolved, if you will, to meet some things. That's exactly what uh, happened up in Katrina in Slidell, Louisiana. Somebody had some 16-footers, had them there for five years, never had anything go on, and then here comes Katrina. And they have very long pilings, and not only did it use the entire 16 foot of the track, but it pulled that track up five more feet, doing exactly what you said. It rocked the dock. That's how we knew exactly how far, how much more surge there was. They had a huge surge. Like everything was horrible about that. But those two boats, there's a 44 and a 37, and those two boats are the only boats within 10 miles that, that we could find out that made it through that storm. We now have a a system that is a shorter system. This is something that uh, John and James have pointed out that some of the smaller boats, uh, this tends to be a little bit heavier, a little bit meatier, a little bit more than what they needed. This is our 12 inch version. Um, pretty much everything the same. Uh, a little bit lighter, obviously, but all the same meat and same material, same everything. Um, this also has a variation, which I did not bring, is a longer version. When you pay attention to the profiles of the boat. That's more than the weight of the boat. Everybody says, well, I have a boat that weighs X. We want to know more about the profile of the boat if you are in uh, rough water. And it has to do with the, the sides of the boat. Some boats need to be pushed away a little farther to allow the movement. And we have uh, uh, the standoff version here. Now, the standoff, a little bit meaty, uh, but what this does is it allows you the boat to be pushed a little farther away. And that will give you some of that, the ability to have that bouncing motion. And we also have a version of the same thing that's longer. If you're in more of a protected area, but you have some of the traditional, um, well, I shouldn't say traditional, the more contemporary style of transoms in which the swim platform sweeps down to the bottom, we find an area in between the cleats and the rubber rail that's substantially different at times, much bigger. So what has to happen is we can drop that down and make it uh, work a couple different ways. Sometimes we'll move it up and sometimes we'll just make it longer. Well, we have a numerous, a, a lot of different areas that we can change minutely just to always make things work for you. We've been doing that for years and that's one of the things that we want input from you also. Um, we also have some uh, other variations of the this is something that we're developing now. This is our float, floating dock system, pardon the banging. Same, same principle. It's got bearings, slides up and down, eliminates the bumper, and what it does is you bolt this to the fascia, and it still moves it up and down, allows the boat to rock, uh, the uh, float to rock, but it does the uh, same thing that we're doing without the lines and without any maintenance, no chance of vandalism or anything with this too. This is something that we're going to be doing much more of. Um, we have lots of people that are are, are actually we're working with some right now and we have more people that would like to see uh, different versions of this. So there's lots of variations that we can do with all the same things based on the floats that you have. Um, 
we have um, this is a system we call this the marina installation package it's kind of unique in that whereas we're bolting as for many years we bolted and we've had marinas that did not like us bolting our track to their piling we came up with this system here and there's numerous different sizes uh, this is an 8 inch for example and all this does is compresses itself right onto the uh, piling set it in place and tighten it down and then there's no holes um, and it works with again any of the tracks we have 8 foot, 10 foot, 12 foot and all of them with the MIP the marine installation package system different diameters All right now up to 14 I'm sorry up to 12 8s, 10s and 12s but it's not a problem if you have an issue with a, uh, a floating dock or you I mean not a floating dock a, uh, a, a wrap that you'd like to use or even uh, some of the concrete uh, square pilings we have the ability to do something similar to that uh, to clamps uh, around square concrete pilings and we'll be doing more of that also we, we've had people ask about uh, different ways of tracking so this is our first we have the marina package as the uh, second we're also dealing with some other things in which we are going to have a wider flange in more of a Y fashion to where they will marry up to pilings um, so that they can be easier to attach. When it's doing onesies and twosies, it's not a problem. I have, I have contractors that have done hundreds and hundreds of these things that don't have a problem with this, but we have people that just say, I'd rather have it uh, with this uh, angle going on. It's in the works um, because people ask us what can we do for this situ situation? <laughs> if you look at how simple it is, it is it's not, it doesn't require any permits at all. This is simply a bolted on, and you, it, so there's no time lapse. You don't have to get involved with all of the different municipalities. Um, so there's no permits to speak of. We have people actually that have used this while they were waiting for permits to come in for their lifts, for example, they had to do something, so they put this on, and what they found out is during uh, uh, the time when the boat is off the lift, they still needed a place to use it, so it's now becoming a great addition to a lift. Many people that do lifts do this for their day dock, for their safety docking and everything else. We're, we're right around 4,000 right now that we've had over the years, and that's accelerating pretty quickly. We have been, since our very first boat show, we sold stuff. Our first sales out of the country were in Japan. Um, we are in 29 different countries right now. Um, the, the fact that the problems that we have are the same problems that everybody else has because of the tides. The difference is, is how much there is and uh, the, the severity of what's going on. The styles of boats make a big difference too, but they're in many, many different countries right now. And we, we, we're pretty proud of the fact that uh, it's cured so many problems. It's cured a lot of problems that uh, nothing else was. The same as me coming here from Arizona to find out that <laughs> there's nothing that works. It, they're, they're, people are very happy. Ron Parr is available right now. Ron Parr is, um, <laughs> he's the guy that we want to we don't want you to listen to. He's done over 600. I'm not even sure anymore. We, I think we quit counting at 600 boats. He was in the area of uh, uh, Punta Gorda when Charlie went on shore and um, it was uh, very devastating and Ron was covered upside down and once he started using this uh, he is the guy, well, if I have a question I tell, talk to Ron just to tell you the truth. I developed a product but Ron has done more installations than I'll, I'll ever dream of. Well slide more, I just uh, short and brief which those of you who know me is difficult to get out of me. <laughs> But uh, long story short, here about eight years ago, we had a nasty little hurricane come through called Charlie. Well, prior to that hurricane, I had a few folks that met Tom for the first time down at the Miami boat show and brought back these rails called slide moors and had brought me to their homes to look at moving pilings and installing them. Well, at first glance, I thought they were awful small for the size boats we were looking to, hook, to tie up to them. I didn't understand the concept of sliders. I, I'd been in the tug of war game for a lot of years. Long story short, we installed three or three different sets for three different boats, uh, a 52-footer, a 44-foot cat, and then a more traditional 32-foot sea ray. Well, the hurricane came through and it devastated this community, with the exception of those three boats. Now the boats around them suffered dramatically, and with the exception to a little bit of shrapnel wounds from flying roof tiles and such, the three boats stayed just where they were, didn't even twist their pilings. I mean, we were kind of flabbergasted. 
So pretty much from that day forward, all of our other total war systems uh, either worked or didn't work, but in varying degrees of success. Uh, funny thing about hurricane and tornadoes. <coughs> Excuse me. We started uh, making it kind of a priority. If you're not going to put your boat up on a lift where it can be secured, you need to be on slide boards, which solved two problems. Uh, one is it anchored the boat to the dock, which all the customers loved. And it eliminated those pesky navigational hazards called outpilots, which, uh, depending on your community and what your code or restrictions are, they were always in a place you didn't want. Them. So today our business practice is pretty simple. I mean, if you're not going to put it on a lift, you need to you need to tie it up the slide mowers, and that's where we've gone from there. Well, we really appreciate what you're doing. We really appreciate it. Ron, Ron has been somebody who has. Uh, has actually introduced probably more product to anybody outside of us. Uh, Ron is, uh, I, I truly have asked Ron over the years many times, how would you go about this? And he has not only have an answer for me, he has two or three because he's done it two or three different times. Ron's a good guy. Ron's a good guy and he knows his stuff. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Anytime. All right, thanks a lot, Ron. Well, we've all talked on the phone a couple of times. Now you see the face behind the voice. You know, one thing I want to mention about Tom, if you run into an installation problem, call us. If you're not sure how it's going to go, if we can't get the answer, we'll find the answer for you. You know, we don't want you taking any chances saying, well, I think this will work. You know, especially when we get some of the sea rays that have a 24-inch separation between the cleat and the, and the rear um, fender. Now, when I first met the guys, you know, I've been in the business for 40 years, uh, and they pulled me pretty much out of retirement. Uh, I was enjoying having a horrible golf game, and I took one look at this product, and I fell in love with it. And well, I've taken the experience I've had working with dealers in the industry over the years, and this is what we're doing here. You know, we're a dealer-focused marketing organization. If, as we set the dealer networks up, we're not competing with you. We will go right work with you with the customer. I get a lead in. If it's in your territory, you get the lead, and I'll work the customer with you. So if I get a, you get a phone call, I talk to Jesse at Sideboard because I'm helping you, or well, my goal is to help you move the product. And that's basically, you know, I can talk a month on this, but that's our program. That's our goal. This is what we want to do. And we've been very successful with it. James? So we really believe in this product. We think it's too great of a product to be under the radar and not be on most every dock. And some of the things, I want to walk through some of the website stuff and the marketing side of things that we're going to do to help get the product out there. As Jesse mentioned, we're really going to be dealer focused, really helping you guys build your companies and build your brands and along with ourselves together. So we'll be spending some advertising dollars, getting our names out there, um, some marketing dollars in your area with you, um, sort of we have some copay packages we're working on. I think one of the key points from a website, uh, website perspective is, John, if you go to the next picture, working on getting your guys' business linked into our website from an SEO perspective, search engine optimization, getting your guys' links, articles, updates that you're doing linked in with our stuff, and we'll get them populating out on the web and driving more traffic to your guys' websites, our websites, and bringing everybody up higher on the search engine referral basis. Uh, as we all know, you know, when people are looking for a new product or service, they often go to the web uh, to see if it's good, see if there are any good reviews on it. Or anything like that. Um, so we'll also be working on some marketing packages for you, some standard materials and some things that you could take with you to the boat shows. For example, banner like this, uh, maybe some type of uh, boat show slide apparatus that you could take with you. Um, so hopefully we'll be getting those to you soon as well. Uh, we actually filmed our TV commercial for Slidemore this morning, and uh, the the press that, that came from filming it right there at, at, at that location that we were filming the commercial was astronomical, and uh, I probably have generated sales just from filming the commercial with, with <laughs> setting up the system uh, and docking, uh, just for people seeing it. So, it, it, you know... I've, I'm excited to see how you guys are, are networking the, the, the branding and the, and the marketing, and I plan to see it on every dock in the Delaware, Maryland, Virginia area very shortly. That's great to hear. And that's what we're seeing with this product, that we haven't really reached a market exposure yet where there's wide market understanding. You know, we're still in that sort of first mover and early adopters phase. 
And once we reach a threshold um, where it gains greater market exposure, I think we'll really see sales start to take off. It's going to be a household name along with mooring whips or floating dock. It's going to be a slide moor. You know? Exactly. And actually, one of the biggest selling things for us is on the referral side of things is once one, per one person gets it in, all the neighbors see it and they want it and they buy it, which is really great. And like Tom referenced at you know, what we see at trade shows, people think we're paying for the testimonials, for the customers to come up and rave about the product. I just sit there and, you know, I try and pull out any camera I have and say, hey, say that again. You know, let me get that on, you know, on film. So it's really uh, great to see. I'm happy to hear that's going well for you in Delaware. This will conclude this webinar. Thank you guys very much. Thanks again. Thanks, guys.